Hello and welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. Today is Wednesday the 20th of October 2021 and as I said you're very very welcome here. Thank you so much for joining me for a wee bit of knitty natter and um, I hope we'll have a good time together. Um, I'm coming to you as always from Devon in the south southwest of England or I live with my husband and two children. Uh, my husband is around, but my kids have gone to school. So um, it's just a few days until the half term break. And I think we're all ready for it. But we're very, very thankful that despite the dreaded C word um, being all around, um, my kids have, haven't got it and haven't um, tested positive, uh, despite many of their friends um, testing positive in school. So we're very, very thankful. And we're hoping that um, they'll stay negative until we get to go over to Ireland on Sunday to visit um, our family. My husband isn't coming. He's staying here to look after the farm. <laughs> Not quite a farm, but a few animals that we have. And um, he was in the south of, he's from the south of Ireland. He was there visiting his family last week. And I'll take the kids to visit my family on Sunday for just under a week. So we're really praying that, that um, we'll keep well and that we'll, we'll get to do that. So where can you find me? You can find me on Instagram as Ruth Loves to Knit. You can find me on Ravelry as Crafty Mid Mad Midwife. But as I always say, I'm not very active over there. And I also have an email for the podcast, which is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. And please feel free to get in touch with me about absolutely anything um, on either probably Instagram or um, the email address. Please don't, if you can help it, don't message me on Ravelry as I probably won't pick it up for quite a while. So that's where you can find me um, if you want to get in touch. And do, I love, I love interacting. Thank you so much for all the comments down below. I've had a bit of a busy stretch this last wee while, so I haven't been as active there either, but I've liked everybody's comment or um, so that you know I've read it and I just really don't take it for granted. I really, really appreciate all your support and all your encouragement too um, since I've started this podcast. And I cannot believe the amount of subscribers um, that, that I have at the moment. And I'm just so grateful and um, a bit overwhelmed, if I'm really honest, um, when there's so many amazing podcasts out there that you could be spending your time watching. So a big, big thank you for that. Um, I'm just looking down at my notes as always, because um, if you've watched this podcast before, you'll know I could go way off on a tangent and I want to keep things um, right from my notes today. Um, another wee thing I really want to thank you for is and I might get a bit emotional here, is um, quite a few episodes ago I mentioned that because I was over a thousand subscribers that I was going to click on the button to get ad revenue, but that I wanted to give the ads, uh, the, any money I, I got from those adverts to the hospital I used to work as, at as a midwife in Bangladesh. I worked there for quite a few years in the very northwest of Bangladesh and hopefully somewhere I'll put a, I'll put a picture up, it's called Lamb Hospital. And, um, you know, Bangladesh has been really, really hit badly with this pandemic and they're doing an amazing work there. And I know some of you now did say, apologise that you pay for the premium that you so you can skip the adverts. But for those who've watched the adverts, we've raised over £100 just by those few minutes um, of, of just letting the adverts run. Now, I have no control over those adverts and I hope none of them have been offensive. But I really thank you for just those few minutes that you've spent just even maybe making your cup of tea while they roll or whatever and just through nothing really we've been able to raise over a hundred pounds and as a day worker in Bangladesh um, um, earns a dollar a day that's going to go a long way and I've also been given some money into my Kofi account and that'll all be going as well so I'll be setting off um, you have to wait a wee, wee while to get the money actually through to you um, I think it's at the end of the month the way YouTube works and I just can't thank you enough honestly it's just warm my heart that 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 this this in this way that we can help this hospital and maybe just do a little bit um of service to them and uh, yeah it's just I big left a big part of my heart there and I just can't thank you enough so that's just a wee update on that and I'll not mention that again for a while but thank you so so much um the other thing is um although the cal is finished most of the prizes have been sent out but just from my prize um bin that there is um one outstanding um prize has not been 
collected yet and if you um, are wondering was it due maybe you didn't watch last time I did put the names the Instagram and the Ravelry names in the show notes from the last episode so do feel free to go back and look at those and maybe your name's on there or maybe if you watched Fernanda's um, email or email watched Fernanda's um, podcast uh, Little Monkeys and Me and your name didn't pop up there maybe you've just missed your name popping up here but one person hasn't claimed their prize and we did say we'd, we'd keep it up until the 5th of November and if that person hasn't claimed the prize uh, by then I will redraw um, but I very much leave the responsibility up to the person to get in touch with me that's brilliant thank you um let me see I'm looking down here you'll have seen hopefully some video from the Willy weekend I apologize I am not a videographer if it makes you sick because I'm bobbing around I apologize um I was very embarrassed to be taking the video but um it was just a small little show but it was just lovely we had a great time and um hopefully they've seen a little bit of the of the clips of that at the start just about four miles from my house um, and have some good goodies to show you that I picked up there um, but I hope you got a bit of a taste of the fibre that was available there um, I've said about going to Ireland but very excited although I don't want to pack <laughs> not looking forward to that and then I just wanted to say um, you'll have heard me mention my lovely friend Hannah from Hannah's Happy Space many many times she's got a podcast go over and give her a, a watch um, and she works in my local yarn shop and last Saturday in Nocampton there was Carnival Day and they do a prize for the best dressed window and we didn't win again but I just wanted to acknowledge the work that um, Hannah put into our window she did she crocheted a massive unicorn now I don't think the people who would be judging would have any clue what work went into um, the the window dressing and I'll put a picture here hopefully to let you see and it's absolutely amazing Hannah well done you're a winner in our eyes and um, although you didn't win a, whatever the cup or the shield or whatever um, you did an amazing job and you made us all smile as the in the knitting group and uh, yeah I think she's um, off crochet for a wee while after doing that I think she's back to knitting but uh, well done Hannah you really put in a great effort so um, hopefully you've seen that picture now um, or it's on her Instagram if you want to go and have a look I think that's all the waffle at seven minutes in <laughs> well oh what am I wearing I suppose I'll probably have to take it off at some point as it gets warmer we had a massive storm here in the middle of the night uh, thunder lightning wind everything but the sun has well it's dipping away again but um typical British uh, podcast have to mention the weather and I thought well while it's yesterday it was foggy all day you couldn't have had a podcast to see anything on the screen um the, the colors would have been awful uh, so I thought right we'll, we'll podcast this morning so it's a wee bit chillier but um not I've still I've still short sleeves um but anyway I thought I'd put something around my neck that I, I'd knitted so this is the let me see my notes stillness it was the stillness M Cal don't think it was last year I think maybe the year before I haven't put the date in my book um by Curious Handmade which is Helen Stewart and I used a fade kit from uh, Dina's Home of Crafts I know many of you have made this um shawl the typical um Helen Stewart pattern where she mentioned where she you know does uh, row by row just beautiful and the yarn is beautiful too. I really enjoyed knitting it. Maybe YouTube will give me a better photograph this week that I can use if I hold this up long enough. <laughs> but it's really beautiful. I know many of you have, have knit it and um, just perfect for this weather. Let's see how long that stays on. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm wearing today. Well, we have a fin one finished object after all the finished objects we had last time. Well, one in a wee cheat I think uh, but we'll show you the one first now I mentioned last time that my daughter likes her hair cut very short and um, gets it shaved at the sides and everything and she her um, she wanted me to knit something for her barber and it is a female um, lady she's American she's called the Mad American in Launceston maybe some of you'll know her and she's great with the kids especially with my son who struggles sometimes going into the hairdressers and she's really great with them and she mentioned that her favourite colour was green and I took her at her word. <laughs> I've made her a very green pair of socks and uh, just a wee vanilla pair of socks. 
and um those are those are my finished object this week they're finished for i've just got my wee my wee knits by ruth um tag that lovely um Jeanette's husband of crafty clegs creations did for me i just put on how to wash them and that and they were done in um the clark and ellie uh, yarn and it's um 80 80 20 400 yards and it's called in your eyes and they're beautiful they're really soft it was beautiful um, yarn to knit with and um, i'll put all the details about if, uh, all the yarn dyers everything down below um and you'll see this coming up again because obviously i had some left with it and i just did the uh shadow wrap heel it's definitely becoming a favorite of mine um really really enjoying doing that so the kids are going for um pre-ireland trip haircuts on saturday so i will take those and uh give them to her then and i've just put them in a wee one of my wee bags and this makes a nice wee present sorry about the glare but we're not going to complain about the sun today so that's my fo i do have now the jury's out you tell me whether you think this is a finished object or not um I should have had my t-shirt on that says um it's my knitting i'll cast on if i want to because all of these things weren't cast on the last time i spoke to you i know some of you are going to think i have a real problem and i maybe need help um but i don't care it keeps me happy it keeps me <laughs> keeps me sane and um i blame this one on fernanda of little monkeys and me anyway so it's not my fault not my fault at all but this is the i saw this on instagram and i just thought oh just my dream to, to be able to sit in a rocking chair. <laughs> oh dear, I'm getting old. And just knit and wear this beautiful shawl <laughs> in a cabin in the woods. Yeah, dream on. And this is the this is the um shawl. It's the burdock shawl by Fox and Folk. And um it's I have to point out that this um the model is only five foot, so it's not as big as this, and also her original pattern was in an iron weight um and so i there's a test knit it's not out yet and um i got some iron this is in a dark colored bag and i can't see anything i got some dark colored um or oh, start again i got some iron wool and i um did a swatch and i just could not get gauge <laughs> started off there knew i wasn't getting gauge this is blocked believe it or not but it's rolling uh, then i went up a needle size i went up two needle another needle size and i still wasn't getting gauge so i thought to pot um and it was going to be absolutely i mean look it's gonna it was gonna be absolutely massive i love a, i love a massive shawl but it was going to be ridiculous that's just um some king coal um the big big 400 gram balls you can get that i wanted to use up but it just wasn't working and then she said that later on in the test group she said well um and i'd be happy for you to use dk as well perfect i got bang on gauge with the dk and i um had it all in stash so oh the smell of this is so sheepy i'll show you the yarn i used first of all i actually used less than she less than it said i would use in the um pattern so the main body of the shawl is in West Yorkshire Spinner's Fleece. Oh dear me, it's not working today at all. West Yorkshire Spinner's Fleece and it's the um, Jacob British Wool. The smell is, I just love it, so sheepy. I actually got four skeins of this on a de-stash of Instagram. It was only 5 50 to start with, but I um, I got four, four of them for a tenner. Um, and it's been in my stash for quite a while and um, I thought this is perfect for this so that was so that's the main body of the shawl and then this is the um, border it's an applied border and um, this is from Midwinter Yarns I've had this for a wee while too um, Old Centrum anybody who speaks Norwegian will be disgusted at that <laughs> and um it's 100% wool and it's oh they're both DK should have said that they're both DK this color is brown black um and it's um 100% wool and both very sheepy very toothy and they're just really gorgeous so I'll show you this so it is the knitting's finished will we say that but it's not blocked all the ends are weaved in those <laughs> could have just so this is the main part of the shawl and I've done it in wool it's probably hard to see lovely wee lace detail see if I can get it closer up 
not really shown very well. It'll be better when it's blocked. And right down to it's an applied border. It's so the pl gorgeous applied border. Now, if you've never done an applied border before, it is a commitment. It is a real commitment to the point where I was so excited to get it finished and enjoying it so much that I totally ignored a page that told me how to do the middle and to get it nicely pointed <laughs> so that um, it would sit properly. So um, I'm a bad test knitter. I was so enjoying it and I just knit, 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 knit. And I didn't realise there was a bit to make it a real nice deep point. But I think, I've apologised to the to the designer, I think mine will block out. Okay, I'll just pull it down and block all that, that nicely out. Sorry about the funny glare on my, there's no lights on, but it's got a funny glare. And this applied border. So I'll show it next time when it's all been blocked and I'll be probably stretch it out a bit bigger. And um, it's just so cosy. It is a bit toothy now, but no, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it doesn't particularly annoy me that the stitch markers are still in. I just love it. Really, really love it. And um, look forward to, I think this is coming off, look forward to winter nights whenever um, I'll be wrapped around my shoulders. But it's a beautiful pattern. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to be coming out. Um, she does a lot of uh, designs for children. But um, I'm sure the iron would have been lovely. But the, the DK suit me fine. Beautifully written. I think there was a couple of mistakes, just just numbers, um, but really well done um, pattern, not not hard to test it at all. And oh, it just smells gorgeous. I love a sheepy smell <laughs> of um of your of yarn. So I feel all discombobulated this morning. I do apologize because with the storm last night, there wasn't a lot of sleep to be had. So I apologize if I'm even worse than I normally am. And um, so maybe get something else out of those two or add them to something else. Um, when you see some of my purchases from um the weekend, I might you might think I could add some of those into it, and I'll not not wrap this up, but it's just in my hide and hammer, um, oh three I think this is, a lovely mulberry color. So that's a finished object. Um, I'll show you the picture again. Really beautiful. Um, I just couldn't get gauge with, with the iron weight and it was just getting to massive needles and I find very hard if I go much above a six my hands just hurt I just struggle so that's one definitely finished one needs blocked um, but I just so enjoyed knitting and that it was just it was just lovely so let's see where we are well I have, <laughs> keep getting not shouted at but um, keep forgetting um, in the summer seems a million million years ago now <laughs> i bought a jigsaw off ebay um called for the love of knit and it was a thousand piece jigsaw and we were going to sit down and do it as as a well my husband probably wouldn't have done it but the kids and me were going to sit down and do it and they started great gusto but my son gave up after two days but my daughter continued and did the whole thing and hopefully there'll be a picture up here and I just wanted to, to show you the lovely jigsaw that my daughter did it's framed now it's up on my craft room wall it's up behind you um and just wanted to acknowledge the work that she put into that for my craft room and um it's a beautiful now there's there's one piece missing <laughs> we have searched the place for it and I we just can't find it so I think we've fudged it all right doesn't look too noticeable if you can see it you can guess where it is uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge that Eva Eva spent an awful lot of time doing that and if you ever want to one it's I got it off eBay and it's called for the love of knit um so I've done it now I've, I've said about it and how how pleased I am with it so that's her finished object let me see what else we have here so that's everything for that so I have got the test knitting bug, definitely the test knitting bug. These other two things hadn't been cast on last time we spoke. And as I said before, I had lost my, knit, my sock knitting mojo and I'm not sure that it's still back. It's not the first thing I reach for, but lovely Angela from Knitting on the Farm, if you've watched her last podcast, um, had uh, shown you a design of hers. It's her first design and she asked if, if I would um, test knit along with some other people certainly and I thought maybe that would get my mojo back and it is a lovely lovely pattern um just wouldn't say I'm jumping still jumping at doing socks but this is gorgeous I think 
you'll get uh, into the, the Christmas spirit, um, maybe looking at it. And this is what I've done so far. Maybe you can't see them very well. If I put that on the floor, I'll never get it again. So you can see quite clearly the wee Christmas trees. Obviously, it's not blocked. I haven't finished it yet. But um, I maybe could have made those a bit darker. They're, they're, the wee trunks are darker in real life. I think you can see that, can't you? And um, lovely heel. I can't remember the name of that kind of waffly, waffle heel. But really, really effective. And then I just put the wee um, green bit on the heel just to use up. And that green is the Ellie and Clark yarn I, made, I used for the, the, bar the barber shop or the barber socks sorry but then this is just so Christmassy those are definitely my Christmas socks so this will be out before Christmas but so just keep an eye so this is the main color it's much deeper it's a real wine excuse me <coughs> that's coming up too bright a real wine deep deep wine color and it's called roses are red and then um, just what's left over from the original socks that I did. Lovely wee bits of brown and red in those. And then I just used a tiny wee scrap for the brown of the trunks. And that's the Paw Ply um, yarn. And roses are red. And um, I'm just using nine inch circulars, which I use for every, every pair of socks I do. Just now, oh, DPNs. If you've watched this, if you've watched this for any length of time, you know I call them the devil sticks, and just magic loop. I just don't like it. So, um, yeah, they're turning out beautifully. That's it. That's a good representation of the. So keep a wee eye out for when those are those are um done. I think I'll be taking those to Ireland with me as well for just to knit on, um, with no pressure. A good wee deadline for it. I've no picture on the pattern. So and oh they're called um Christmas on the farm socks. Thought that was very good. And they're just in another hide and hammer bag, just the wee mini one, um 03 mini, and um nothing else I want to tell you about that. No. So Angela, they're lovely. Really, really enjoying knitting them, and um your pattern's beautiful really well written too for your first pattern so excited that's exciting isn't it and then sure why not just cast on another test knit <laughs> three's a charm well sure i've finished one now so that's all right and the next one is across the valley shawl by under the olive tree knits and if you've watched this podcast from any time at all you know i'm a real fan of gem at all under the olive tree knits and um she, i'm in her testing group now and See if I can find a picture of this before I. There we go. Um, she to me she's the queen of one skein shawls. If you ever want to do a one skein shawl, I've done many many of her shawls for um presents for people and especially last Christmas. And this is the across the valley shawl. There's lovely lace there. Let's see, you can see it a bit better here. And this is a longer deadline, so I've kind of been just tottering about this, but doing the other ones a wee bit more. So I'll show you the yarns that I'm using first, and it's there from Stuart Yarns. Um, have them quite a wee while. And I don't know that they came as a set, but um, they go quite well together. So these are the two yarns that I'm using. Oh dear me, this glare. There we go. And being the wally that I am, I took the labels off and I can't remember which is which. But I think, hmm, I think this one is Stag Pol Polag. You, you pronounce that as you will in her pitter patter base. And as I say, it's Stuart Yarn. She's away up in Inverness in Scotland. And then the other one is Tarmogen. I presume that's a silent, a silent P in the same base and again Stuart yarns so and then for the wee bit of contrast you see there's three colors I'm going to try this I don't know whether it'll work or not if it doesn't work I'll use something much deeper but I thought it would stand out all right maybe some of you are yelling at the screen no that would never work 
sure you just try it and if it doesn't work I'll just use a black or a grey or something and then what I've done so far is this it's a lovely lovely um it's a lovely lovely um squishy almost do you think it was stripes wouldn't you really beautiful um there we go so squishy and beautiful yarn to knit with i think it's going to be a really lovely pattern i'm probably about three quarters of the way through that bit before i do the um slip stitches to to add the other color in so that'll not take well not too long that'll be easy to knit up and her her patterns are always so well written and um yeah if you have never knit any of the under the olive tree knit patterns um give them a wee give them a wee look on it's that's her um name on Ravelry and um I'll just show you one more time. Just think it's gorgeous. So there we go. And that is in my beautiful bag by Jeanette from Crafty Clegg's Creations. I think it's Liberty. I'm not awfully awfully up on my I just say it like it. I don't I don't have any uh and then beautiful wee apple stitch marker came with it there was a wee tassel with it too which was awfully nice but i kept getting it stuck in the zip so i just took it off it's a nice like linen base she always has beautifully her, her bags are so well made um not sure what's in her shop at the minute but go and have a wee look so so that's the burdock shawl is off the needles the christmas on the farm i'll be taken to ireland and across the valley shawl um will get done too so Plenty to be doing, plenty um, to be looking at and um, chuffed a bits to get onto those test knits. Oh, sure, it's always something to do, isn't there? I have whips, I've, I've whips in my basket. It's fine, I'll get done, I'll get done. So my mum's t-shirt that I keep talking about, the Rena de Picas, I'll just show you the picture again. I'm sure you're fed up of hearing about it. Um, by Valentina Bogdanova. Is going to Ireland as well <laughs> because I have the whole top of it done um down I've split for the sleeves and everything um but I don't want to knit on it anymore until I see if it fits my mum if it doesn't I'm not ripping it out because that is some amount of um lace so hopefully next time you'll see it nearly done or on my mum <laughs> so hopefully she'll let me take a, a picture with her with it on um it's meant to be for christmas but she, she asked me to do it for her. she knows it's coming so it's no big surprise and that's just in a really lovely bag from rick rack room so that'll be it going in my luggage um to be knit on as well and the socks will be for the plane so i'm all organized having a clue what i'm putting in the suitcase otherwise but i've got my knitting organized it's not that's the main thing isn't it <laughs> so that's that um the other things i was knitting on um are the giselle, giselle shawl by cami joe knits and if you remember that was um a big panel of garter stitch and then um a whole load of uh lace mo with mohair and over the front of it and i'm not sure that i've done quite a bit of the garter but you don't need to see 25 inches of grey garter stitch do you so that'll be brought out again when those are done um and then the other one which is in the whip timeout naughty corner <laughs> do you ever get that that you've knit for years you have done things that you never thought you'd be able to do that you know maybe your your um skill level wouldn't be good enough but you've conquered it and you've got there and you feel really good about yourself and then you get you get a, a pattern that should be simple and you just struggle with it and that's my press flowers shawl by savory knitting and i have had to put it in time out the yarn is gorgeous um it's witchcrafty lady yarn i love the yarn it's so good to knit with but i cannot get to grips with the chart but i am going to get to grips with the chart because i want the finished product and everybody says once you get to grips with the first uh, repeat um it's very intuitive after that but I've put it in the naughty corner because it was making me annoyed. <laughs> so, and I've put it out of sight. I've put it with a lid on it so because it was on the bed and it just annoyed me every time I looked at it. So I think that's probably why I picked up some of the test knits because that was just annoying me. So I'll get back to it. Hundreds of people have knit it. So it's obviously not, it's me. It's not 
not the patterns not not anything um but you just get and you just kind of lose your confidence a wee bit so i just put it over and we'll get it out again whenever maybe the darker nights come in and the clocks change and we're stuck in the house and we have a bit more concentration so those two shawls will get done uh, i'm really excited to do the giselle giselle shawl all the details will be below um because it's just gorgeous and i'm going to venture into mohair now we said I would never do it, but I'm going to venture into mohair. So there you go. But heard, you heard it here. <laughs> I just wanted to mention a couple of podcasts. Um, I've been I I've fallen really far behind. Then I caught up, and then I fell a bit behind again. Um, but over the weekend, um, we had been to the fair. Took the kids to the fair at Oakhampton. Eva went off with her friends, but Samuel's only eleven, so he had to stay with his mummy, and um. They went on the rides, had a good, great time, but Samuel and I uh, bought some food from one of the trucks and I don't know anyway, but we weren't in great shape for the rest of the weekend is all I'm saying. So I watched a lot of podcasts and got caught up, but some of them um, just wanted to share with you. The first one's a new one and it's only, she's only our second um, episode out and she is, I hope I say this right, it's Kriya Bea. Kriya Bea podcast i'll put the details down below it's c-r-e-a-b-e-a -E -E podcast and that's rebecca and she's from scotland but she lives in london and her knits are beautiful um she loves all the petite knits and all of what um all of that sort of um stuff go and have a wee look at her she's a really lovely girl and um such a lovely knitter and then there's lauren knits um she's up in aberdeen she knits a lot with Shetland wool. She's a was a nurse. She's a stay at home mum now, and um, she uh, did a placement up in Shetland. So she's got um a lot of that, and she's just very honest. She shows you the good and the bad. She just knit a top, um, was it the ranunculus, and um, just showed how um it, um, I think it's beautiful, but she doesn't like it, um, how the different lot numbers of yarn if you don't get them the same even if it's commercial yarn it sometimes doesn't work out so um go on and check out lauren she is lovely and then of course linda for from for the fun of knit and linda and i i was watching um i've watched linda's right all all of hers right from the start and um she's so bubbly and gray hair She's my, my mate and um, just really, really lovely, fantastic knitter. Um, but she was on holidays and she was doing a vlog from her holidays at the start of her podcast. And I saw my face pop up. She was watching my podcast. Couldn't believe it. And um, so I got in touch and I said, oh, my goodness, she must be really desperate to be on your holidays and you're watching me. And we've been communicating back and forth. And um, but I won a prize on her podcast the other day. So it was really lovely. And um, so she's for the fun of knit Linda and she goes by Nena NENA -N -N knits on Instagram. But go and check her out. If you if my podcast is your kind of way, I would say I would say she would suit your your um palette as well. So go and check her out. And then just lastly is Sugar Folk Homemade, and that's Michaela, Michaela. Um and she's just lovely and she's a home mum with three young children who often appear on the podcast, bless her. She's trying to podcast when they're having naps and things and sometimes, you know, children won't play the ball and won't nap when you want them to. So they often appear and they're just gorgeous, often appear in her podcast. But she's a lovely knitter too and has just finished the most gorgeous colour work um, sweater or top and a beautiful um, shawl. So go and check her out. She's in America. So I think I've covered... I've covered it, two from America and two from the UK. There, I've covered, I've covered them all. So we're doing fine. So how are you? Are you okay? <laughs> Let's take a wee sip of water. I see all these podcasters with this lovely, these lovely cups of tea and everything, and and their beautiful mugs. I love pottery mugs as well. Apart from yarn, that's probably my my second favorite thing. I love, I love mugs. Um, but I think if I had coffee or tea it would just sit there and go cold so I always just bring water but I do love both coffee and tea right if not everybody's into haul videos or into what people buy um I love it I absolutely love it I love a craft room tour what you can see is my craft room so you'll not be getting a tour um and I love to see what people buy I don't mind if they've spent a fortune I don't mind if it's the cheapest of the cheap 
if it makes you happy and you can afford it and your bills are paid and your family's fed go for it we're not justifying any of it but i had um i had planned on going to two yarn festivals i two last year and they were cancelled so i had squirreled away the money that i'd saved for that and then i would planned to go to two this year the stitch fest southwest stitch fest is on next month but i have finally decided i'm not going i'm just not ready for for it i'm just not ready for it and everybody you know everybody's at different stages and everything so i just thoroughly enjoyed the world the woolly weekends we 11 vendors and um, some of those were um you know selling bats and selling um that you know fleeces and things like that there was only what four or five selling what i would call yarn you know um but such a lovely atmosphere such a great cause raising money for a children's hospice everybody was so glad to be there and um we just had a great time and once when i arrived i just went down by myself um so so close to home slipped out while everybody was still sleeping i think um and um got there and the next thing I heard was there's Ruth and it was my friend Caroline from our knit group her mum and her wee daughter and we had so much fun with Lucy Lucy's in um, year six so what would that be 11 10 11 and she just has got the bug for yarn and she bought herself a lovely drop spindle she's more patient than me and she got some lovely bats and some lovely fleece to, to spin and we had so much fun and uh, it was my daughter didn't want to go this year so I enjoyed being an auntie for the morning and we had a lovely cup of tea and sat down and had I had my first uh, cream tea here in Devon even though we've been here for a couple of years and I was very scared of putting the cream on for the before the jam or the jam before the cream or oh I was so scared of getting it wrong but anyway we survived <laughs> If you're not from the UK, you won't understand what that is all about. And um, so we had a lovely time and um, I spent all my money that I was going to spend between the two festivals. And my big tip for going to yarn festivals is take cash because when the fun stops, stop. There's an advert here in the UK for gambling and things like that. And it says when the fun stops, stop. And that's what I did. I think I maybe went £15 over. I think that was that was my but I am chuffed to bits with all my bits and pieces some of it was stash enhancement some of it was stuff that I really wanted I'd go for one thing I'd gone online um, and checked it out beforehand and um, I'll stop talking about it and I'll show you below so what will we go for first well I'll show you the I'll show you the just the stash enhancement there was a lovely girl there sorry crinkling there was a lovely girl there who um um has decided to stop dyeing yarn and is dyeing the bats and the fiber instead and so she had a reduce to clear while i was on it like a beta honey i was just you know and I'll, I'll show you what so her lovely um bee and ivy wool is the this i mean i am a sucker for any beautiful <laughs> wrapping or and this is a hundred percent blue pure llewellyn i'm going to say llewellyn wool Hand wash with love, DK. Yeah. I say she was just, that was the last of hers. So I'll show you the, I just got some stat. This is all DK. And um, it was as cheap as chips, as in my opinion. And that's those. I'll just put those down. So I've got five of those. And then, sorry for... And then I got from the same lady, I could have bought her whole basket, but I had to be sensible. Again, Bee and Ivy. And I got two of these and with my hair hanging off, two of these and these are Aran, like a lovely denim blue colour. So, so that was just to sort of have some things in the stash. And she actually gave me one of those free because I bought the other ones off her. And then this is the one that I had looked up on the uh, website before I went to have a wee idea. And I went in, you'll see it on the wee video. I went in and um, she, like a lot of vendors, they just had one of everything out. And I said to her, would, would you have a fade in, in? So she had boxes underneath her stand and I wanted DK. Everything I bought was DK and um, I wanted DK and she came out and she came out with and just went, what about those? <laughs> And I just, she, she must have known me, like the lovely, the lovely colours on that. Ugh. There we go. 
and that was just exactly the way she brought them out of the box like that and I said yes that's me so that was my biggest spendy purchase and her she is um gorgeous yarns they're everything's locally from Cornwall or Devon and it's gorgeous yarns and they're all botanically dyed so this is madder I've put an elastic band around them to keep them and this is madder as well but obviously um a different um, I don't know in the bath in the baths longer shorter whatever um this one is buckthorn bark and this one is daffodil sorry about the light so anyway just perfect for a fade so I'll be very honest I don't have the um pattern for those yet but I will and um I have I have an idea but I'm not going to say anything yet and then she gave me three wee freebies wee wee freebies and they are the same as those so that gives me a bit extra um mileage as well and just wee 25 gram 50 meters on each of those and um thank you very much for those and oh I can't remember the girl's name but she's online she's she's online she's got her website and it's gorgeous yarns beautiful and she has actually sets that you can buy to botanically dye yarn um and um yeah different wee things like that so that was really it was lovely talking to her and it's so squishy it's just brilliant and then another girl who I bought off, if you saw the episode where I had the break in the tide shawl, um, it was the yarn I bought off this lady was uh, was um, what I used for that. And as soon as I saw this, actually Lucy bought one of these, Caroline's daughter, and um, if she hadn't, I probably would have bought all three. And it's from Madder About Wool. She is just down the road from me in Launston. Madder About Wool. I'll put all the details in the box. And I bought two of those in DK. It was lovely gold colour. And I already had this. I got this on a D stash on Instagram from um, Beehive Yarns. And I just thought I'd put those together. And that'll bring out the gold. And I would really like to do another um, one of the Break in the Tide shawls, to be honest. I really, really enjoyed it. And so I had this one for, um, from a D stash. It's called Gilded. And it's it's um, there's a bit of silk in it, which would be beautiful, um, but but it's DK as well. So chuffed to bits with those. I never thought of myself as a green person, but I seem to have a lot of green now, and um, really looking forward to knitting with those. And then lastly, excuse me, sorry, my nose is going funny. Um, there was another stall, and it was Perrin Yarns. She's in Cornwall too and I got those two and uh, the camera oh, you can't see they go very well together um one this one's tweedy dk sunset party and this one is black current sorbet again tweedy dk 100 percent merino tweed and that'll be for um a shawl definitely although i just when i came home i realized i do have this color um as well so it might but I just couldn't resist. And this stall, um, this lady had um yarn made with banana. Ban and very, very tempted with that. Only it was as thin as just oh wafer thin. And the way I knit, I wrap my I wrap the yarn around my finger and I was worried that I would pull it, you know, and I wouldn't I wouldn't last. But it was really, really interesting yarn and um I looked at it several times and I put it back down again. But Perrin Yarns, she's got an online shop as well. Now, Gorgeous Yarns and Perrin Yarns are going to be at Southwest Stitch Fest. So if you are going to them, you'll, you'll be able to see that in real life. So that's my purchases. Loads, not too bad. I don't know. I'm I'm chuffed to bits with all of them. So, <laughs> and um, there you go. <laughs> um, I also got this week, Spoiled Rotten, but I'll show you it next time. Um, uh, My Wool Swap. Uh, my wool swap package um i got beautiful beautiful yarn in that as well um and then i got my uh ploy paw ply company uh advent oh so tempting it's hidden away uh, for december i ordered it months and months ago actually um i de-stashed some yarn and bought the advent calendar and i de-stashed some yarn and i went shopping again so uh, it's just 
I sell it in a buy then and I sell it in a buy then but sure that's all right and uh, so some of you may have helped me enjoy that yarn yarn festival by buying some of my de-stash yarn so I do appreciate it <laughs> So that's so it'd be exciting to see what I use those for. Um, really enjoying D Care. Always would have been a four ply um fingering weight girl, um, but really really enjoying the D K at the minute and the speed that it knits up. Um, I I'll still be a four four ply fingering um at heart, but um yeah, really enjoying the the D K. So I hope you think hope you think those are nice purchases. In fact, I'm looking at some of the the purples there and thinking they might go with with some of the purples there. So. Um, it is it is interesting when you go to to festivals um to see the color palettes and definitely the the wintry purples greens burgundies were all in and um I wonder if I'd gone to a summer festival what the colors maybe more pastelies or whatever um might have been in too so so it did all right didn't it so that's that well if you've made it this far you've done well um maybe going to be a wee bit of a shorter episode this this week but I'm not sure maybe not. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I think I've showed you everything and um, I just wanted to touch base before um, we go home to Ireland and um, just hopefully some of those things will be done for next time and some of the whips will be picked up. I'll maybe go through some of the whips next time because um, there's a couple of things that I had started before the summer and put down through the summer because um, a bit too warm and woolly to be knitting on and those need to be picked up again and then of course I have a million million patterns swinging around my my mind that I want to to knit as well so there you go well how I always finish my podcast is by just sharing a little bit from God's word I am a Christian and um, we work for a Christian mission so our life is basically our faith and if that's not for you, if that's not what you're here for, no problem at all. It's been amazing to spend some time with you. My ramble has maybe been worse than ever this week. Um, I think just after not being well for a couple of days, I feel a little bit discombobulated. But um, I hope you got some sense out of it and I hope that um, you enjoyed it and you got some food for thought for your knitting as well. So if you're leaving me now, I'll bid you goodbye. And um, thank you so, so much for joining me and look after yourselves. God bless. Bye. If you're staying with me, I did think maybe I'd do something a bit different today. Um, I was thinking, what could I share with you? And um, I just thought maybe I'll share a bit of my testimony, something more personal. Um, maybe if you don't, maybe if you're watching this and, and you're just out of curiosity, you don't know what a testimony is. And it's just something that if you have Christ in your heart, there's usually a story about it. There's usually something that's happened to you. And, and you got to a point where you just needed to hand your life over to God. And, you know, um, I grew up in a Christian home and I want to point out that to, to a Christian home is um, not just being born in a Christian country, but a real Bible believing um, home where my parents both followed Christ completely. My dad was a minister for all of my childhood, still preaches. He's 81 now and he still preaches. Um, my mum was a teacher and um, yeah, we were submerged into all things church and Christian. And um, if the church was open... <laughs> We were, it felt like we were there. We were at the youth events. I have one brother who's older than me and we were at everything and um, I didn't like it. <laughs> I'll be very honest with you. I, oh, I didn't like it. You know, we used to, we had a very strict upbringing just because we were in a church with many, many people and they all had an opinion and they all thought that we should have been better behaved than anybody else and that we should dress a certain way and that we should act a certain way. And as teenagers, especially growing up, we really struggled with it, my brother and myself. And um, we didn't rebel in a, in a really bad way, but um, we we just felt like, why us? Why did we didn't choose to be born into this? Blah, 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 blah. Now I feel so blessed, unbelievably blessed to have had that background. But at the time, I didn't appreciate it. And, you know, um, but my as I say, my dad was a, a minister of a very, very large church in Northern Ireland, right through the Troubles, right through all of that historical end of things. Um, and he often was so busy. And I used to get so annoyed. As soon as you sat down for a meal, the phone would ring and somebody from church would need him. And he would go. He's an amazing person. He would go morning, noon, middle of the night if somebody needed him. And, and I used to really begrudge it, to be honest, because I didn't want him to go. I didn't. I wanted him to be here for me. But, you know, um, 
on the other hand we had great fun we had really good fun we had a massive youth group and even on the bad days i still would have stood up for christianity i still would have stood up for for the things of god but you know i just want to give a wee trigger warning here that we'll be talking about um premature death and i will be talking about um sad situations that affected my life and brought me to god so i just want to put that wee trigger there but you know when I was about 15 or 16 we were out doing games at school in a park and um, I had to go home I had to come up back up to the school and and get changed and go home on the bus and as the bus went past the park there was an ambulance there and one of the boys that I had been doing PE with uh, just shortly after I left I'd had a massive heart attack and died on the spot I was only 16 and he had that undiagnosed cardiac issue that some, you know, you hear footballers having. Only 16 and just snuffed out like that. And that was in the November. And I was so angry. Oh, I was a nightmare to live with. I just shouted at God. I hate you. I, I, and I was so angry. Why would you let this happen? And then in the following February, a lovely girl called Angela, who um, was one of my girls' brigade leaders, just went to bed one night and didn't wake up. She had a massive brain bleed. And you know, I could have got angry again. I could have screamed and yelled and cried, but instead I just thought, where would I be if I went to bed one night and didn't wake up? It terrified me. Where would I be? And Angela was ready. Angela, Angela was a Christian. And even though I had been brought up in a Christian home, I had never asked Jesus to be my saviour and Lord. But you know, that Easter, I went to a big youth kind of conference thing that happens every Easter and it was about, was it, at that time there was 300, 400 young people used to gather for it so, and even though I wasn't a Christian I wouldn't have missed it. All the boys, all the crack, all the all the chat and the laughter, I wouldn't have missed it but that there was something different about that Easter and the Lord was working in my heart. The Lord was breaking me down to make me realise my need for him and eventually I decided that I needed Christ in my heart and I asked someone to to help me to, to pray and it's just a prayer just what some people call the sinner's prayer and literally all we had all I had to do was just say Lord forgive me for all the wrongs I've done in my life please be the center of my life and be um help me to give my life to you to live for you as I can as the best I can and that is it that is it that's there's no bright lights no no uh, mummy paid no nothing it, that's as simple as it was for me but immediately I just felt a burden fall off my back I just felt a burden lifted that I had asked Jesus to be my savior and you know one of the things that people would say and I would say to you as well as if you know when that happens to tell someone to make it public sort of so that so you've got made that commitment and I went to my friend a really good friend and said listen I've just become a Christian she just laughed she laughed at me not at me but but what do you mean you've always been a Christian and you know it really hit me that I had looked the part I had acted the part and I'd fooled everyone you know I I dressed nicely I went to church I read my bible when I needed to I passed my scripture exams at my girls brigade I didn't go out drinking I didn't go I looked like I was a Christian but my heart was as dark as anybody else's the worst criminal in the world my heart was as dark as them and I was ashamed I was so ashamed that I had made people think that I was saved when I was the farthest thing away from it you know maybe you're the same maybe you've gone to church all your life maybe you've done all the good things maybe you work for charity maybe you've done but you have never come to that commitment to ask God so I would say to the kids to be boss of your life and I hope even listening to this today it'll trigger something in you that you realize you need to come to know him you know Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 said God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this it is a gift from God salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so none of us can boast no matter how many good things you do that will not get you to heaven we could as humans we could never make it we feel every single day and you know grace means a gift undeserved and that certainly is salvation none of us deserve the amazing gift that Christ has given us and that hope of a home in heaven someday and the Bible clearly tells us that it isn't good works or trying hard that'll get it there because we will continuously fail and continuously fall. I have never regretted my decision to give my life to God. It hasn't been easy at times. He has taken me 
far out of my comfort zone time and time again. But you know, he loves me and he knows what's best for me. And he's never let me down or deserted me. And I have proved that many, many times. And I just want to leave Romans 12, 1 and 2 with you. And it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living sacrifice, the kind he will the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And that's my desire. I just pray that someone some somewhere will realize their need for the Lord in their life. I can't make you, I can't persuade you, I can't trick you, I can't do anything humanly speaking. God won't do anything. He he I remember my granny had a picture of and it's a door and there's no handle on the outside of that door and it's a picture of Jesus knocking on that door. It's up to you to open your heart to him. And I just hope maybe you've got a little bit more insight. My story doesn't stop there. It didn't stop the day I got saved. It didn't stop the day I asked Christ into my heart. It's gone on and on and on. And there's a million stories I could tell you, but don't worry, I'm not going to. But I pray today that if you want to know more about my faith or if you want to know more about um, getting saved, if you want to know more about what it means, if you don't agree, get in touch. Please use the email ruthlovestoknit at gmail.com if I can help you in any shape or form from knitting right through to, to faith issues. I don't have the answers to everything. I'm not perfect in any shape or form, but I pray that today you will just have got some wee blessing that you'll um, know God loves you and that he is has his arms open to accept you when you're ready. Listen, that is it for today. I think that's been the worst ramble I've ever had all from the start. I pray that you'll just hope you'll just uh, give me a Bible today. <laughs> Um, and I hope you're all well. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you look after yourselves. And above all, just keep on knitting. All right. God bless. Bye.